Hi, my name is Trainmaster04, and today I'll be reviewing and operating the brand new Lionel 3 Rail O Scale Vision Line Auxiliary Water Tender. Union Pacific 4014, do you read me? Over. Roger that. Union Pacific 4014, I read you. Over. Start up and stand by. Over. Yes, sir. Let's first start off with a little bit of history as well as explaining me explaining what a, a auxiliary water tender is and then after that I'll get further into the detailing as well as what features that this tender has in store. Now for those who do not know what auxiliary water tenders are, let me take a moment and actually explain what auxiliary water tenders are, what they are for, and how do they work. So on a regular steam locomotive, it, and it needs a fuel source, for example, wood, coal, fuel oil, and it also needs water in order to produce steam. And these locomotives, steam locomotives were fueled by having different stations, fueling stations along the line at certain distances. But sometimes that would hinder the performance of the train itself, meaning it would cause the train to either be delayed or not be able to make as better time as other railroads in the sense of competition. So to extend the lifetime and or supply of the water in the, in the locomotive tender itself, railroads started to look for alternative ways to carrying extra water. For example, the auxiliary water tender. Auxiliary water tender's primary use is actually for carrying extra loads of water, multi thousands of gallons of water. Now this is how they basically work. So you have a loaded auxiliary water tender full to the brim of water. While the locomotive is working hard and using up water to create steam, the water reservoir in the normal locomotive tender starts to run dry, but in order to not stop, the, in, the crew members can then open a valve to, from the auxiliary water tender, and water can then be pumped from the auxiliary water tender into the normal locomotive tender, and this would prevent any stopping of the train along the route and cause any delay that can ever that can come up along the way. The auxiliary water tender themselves were based off of a vendor built oil tender design, which means at the rear end it has a bit of a more of a cylindrical look to it, and this was the idea of making it to where the water capacity was at the maximum best. And so around in the 1930s, the first auxiliary water tenders start to pop up on the Great Northern Railway where stops to get extra water was primarily limited since the Great Northern Railway was a very heavy and rugged mountain territory and most of the time the line would be on either going through tunnels, snowsheds, trestles, bridges, and even on the sides of cliffs. So it made sense for them to want to pre-order and use auxiliary water tenders. Now that you know what an auxiliary water tender is and a bit of history behind these auxiliary water tenders, now let me go through the different features of this model. This model was issued in the 2018 Volume 2 catalog from Lionel Trains. The minimum, minimum curve on this tender is 031 and it measures around the length of 12 inches. Now previous water tenders that Lionel has produced in the past they did not have sounds instead they were just die cast body shells on trucks and also with manually operated couplers and also a headlight. Now on this model it, that's different this model actually has re legacy rail sounds and legacy control with it. This means that it has actually loading and unloading sounds, or in this case, the loading of water for the day and the shutdown and servicing of the locomotive. 
and my and personally I think that is a very cool feature on these auxiliary water tenders. Now you may be wondering through your smart device of whatnot, how do you control this tender through what kind of control system? Is there any limit and so forth? And also can you program it to run with your legacy locomotive of any kind? And the quick answer for that last question is yes, you can. You can program this tender to operate with this with any of your locomotives legacy locomotives and I'll show you how to do that later in this video but for now let me first answer the first set of questions so what is the best way to operate this tender well the best way is through the Lionel legacy control system if you run this tender through that system you'll be able to access all of the features that are available in this tender. Next, you have the CAB1 Team CC or Train Master Command Control System. To You can operate it through that. Now, the only problem with that is you won't be able to access all of the features compared to the legacy control system. And finally, you can also operate this water tender with the, with a conventional transformer and some track. But take note, you won't be able to really access as much of the cool features in this tender compared to both the Team CC and the Legacy system. Now, you will be able to get the sounds of the wheels, wheel squealing and clanging of the couplers. That is activated with or without a control system, but instead is activated through a motion uh, sensor on one of the trucks. Now let's go a little deeper and let me show you some of the finer die cast and separately applied detailing on this tender. Looking at the front of this, aug of this beautiful auxiliary water tender, we first see the dummy O-gauge coupler. Now, take note that this dummy O-gauge coupler cannot be open or closed because it is a dummy for one thing, which means that it does not operate. So, you cannot throw this coupler through your uh, command system nor by manual. But this tender does offer an electrocoupler on the rear end, which I will show you later on. Above that, we have a operating separately applied coupler cup bar. Besides that, we have two separately applied uh, steps. Above those steps, we have two blackened, uh, black painted ladders that lead up to the top of the platform on the tank. Besides that, we have a brake wheel with both separately applied and molded in detailing. Besides that, we have some separately applied plumbing for this auxiliary water tender, which is for connecting hoses from the tender itself to the steam locomotive tender, some more molded in detailing, and also some, uh, some more molded in detailing for electrical. Above that, we have legible UP, uh, UP lettering, as well as the tender number itself. Looking down the side of the tender, we can see this beautiful clear and crisp 49er paint scheme, which when connected to a 49er ten, uh, Challenger, which I reviewed um, not too long ago, it matches and flows almost seamlessly. Underneath we have two th six wheeled trucks that also have, if I tip the tender a little bit, you can see that the wheels are again red walled similar to the wheels on the 49er Challenger. Above the trucks we have some molded in and separately applied plumbing, some more separately applied detailing on the underside of the tender, and again and also on the trucks they have silver outlining of the roller bearing caps. Looking on top of this auxiliary water tender, we can see that we have some simulated wood planking on top of the tender itself, a whole lot of separately applied grab irons for safety all around the ladders that, that we saw earlier on the sides, 
as well as on the rear as well. In the middle, we have the water hatch, which can be open and closed. Now, underneath this hatch, instead of it being blank or not even being able to open, Lionel was able to put the sound knob inside of the tender. Past the hatch, we can get a glimpse of the reverse light, which I will show you just in a second. Similar to the front, but isn't, is the back. To start off, we have the headlight, which comes on when you put the tender in reverse mode. And I will show you this when I show you how to program this tender with any of your legacy steam locomotives. Next, we have some more grab irons that lead down with two separately applied blackened ladders. Below that, we have the UP uh, lettering as well as numbering from that which we saw from the front. Some more separately applied and molded in detailing. Some more electrical ports. Some more plumbing. And also a, a separately applied coupler cup bar. And below that coupler cup bar, we have an operating electrocoupler. Now that I've told you what this model has to offer, as well as shown you some of the separately applied as well as molded in detailing around this auxiliary water tender, it is now time for me to show you what this tender can do under power, as well as how you can program this into, or program this tender with a legacy locomotive. Now let's have some fun by me showing you what this auxiliary water tender can produce sound wise. To start off, this is what the sound what it sounds like when I pull the whistle cord. That is a bit of a air kind air sound in the, with this water tender. Next here is the train brake lever. That would be the sounds of the air brakes actually applying. And here are the sounds of the air brakes actually releasing. Next, here are the loading and unloading sounds. First, I'll play the loading sounds. All right, looks like we're just about ready. How's that fire looking? Here is the unloading sequence. Go ahead and put a good bank on that fire. Finally, here is what the tender backup light looks like, as well as what the electrocoupler looks like when thrown. In reverse, not in reverse. And also, here's the electrocoupler. Now that I've pulled a locomotive up and turned it on and kept power turned onto the track, I want to show you how you can program this tender with a legacy locomotive of any kind. To start off, you want to press the fourth soft key. And I'll first get out of there. Choose your train number, which in this case I want it to be number one. Then you want to select the info section, press the build, choose the uh, locomotive that you want. In this case, I chose number nine, which is the 49er Challenger, and also select the tender as well with whatever number it is on your system. Next, press the set button. And now the tender... Eh. There it goes. Now the tender and locomotive are linked together, so to speak, and know what the other is doing when you run this, when you run the pair together. So, without further ado, Let's have some fun and run this, run this tender and locomotive around the layout. Now that I've shown you all, these, all the features that this tender can offer, it is now time to have some fun and listen as well as watch 
this tender and go around the layout in between a legacy locomotive as well as a set of cars. So, without further ado, here we go. Before I go, I just wanted to tell you how I felt about this product as well as how much do these auxiliary water tenders cost. Well, these auxiliary water tenders cost uh, at the MSRP price is right at $500. Now, that might seem a little bit of, a bit steep, but personally I feel like that's actually pretty fair in the sense of what you actually get out of these tenders. For example, you get out, you get a lot of cool sound features as what on uh, moving and not moving, and it's just a lot of fun. To me, I would love to actually get one of these, but sadly, both the locomotive and this water tender is actually not a part of my own collection. It's actually a part of my friend's collection, which I'll probably will do some more videos of of his layout as well as. Uh, more products of his of his own soon but anyway it's now time for me to go I hope you enjoyed this video and found it actually very useful on your further purchase to add to your collection uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and would like to see any more videos of these types my name is Trainmaster04 and I'll see you next time